Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hello and welcome to our final episode of Wada TV series on Islamic finance with Sheikh Shadi Asulayman from Sydney, Australia. Sheikh Shadi, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Sheikh Shadi, in the, in the past 14 episodes, you uh, introduced us to many things, the concepts uh, of, uh, that tackled the concepts of um, uh, Islamic uh, economics. We're going to try uh, to tackle them uh, here in our uh, uh, wrap-up uh, episode. Um, Sheikh, uh, you started uh, first of all by uh, telling us what the main differences between Islamic uh, uh, pr principles in economics and the capitalist ones uh, or the uh, communist ones. Of course, uh, when we did uh, these series, we did it at a time uh, when the world suffered a severe financial crisis as uh, it was proven that the unrestricted uh, uh, traditional banking system uh, in the West with all its virtual components could not withstand uh, all of, of that virtual uh, derivatives and that uh, uh, unrestricted risk uh, with no real management uh, to that risk at a time, of course, when Islamic banking uh, uh, didn't suffer a single case of bankruptcy unlike what happened uh, elsewhere. Yes, uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. We mentioned that uh, capitalism focuses on the individual, of the in, uh, or focuses on the interest of the individual without any restrictions, the freedom of uh, free market, uh, free pricing and so on. The leverage uh, is, is, was very heavy. Yes, and uh, look, this is the concept of capitalism, where, which we realized that uh, the rich is becoming more rich, the poor is becoming more poor, injustice, and uh, ambiguous contracts, unclear contracts, right. contracts in the air. Th in a, Regulations uh, were almost not there. Yeah, papers, you know, just paper companies worth millions of dollars, mm -hmm. and when you come to find that, there are nothing. So right, virtual. Yeah, so these are the problem. Then you've got the communist or the social, uh, social uh, socialism. Uh, they mainly focus on... Uh, the, in, the interest of the public and very rare they look into the interest of the uh, uh, individual where Islam, the beauty about Islam Islam looks at the interest of the public and also looks at the interest of the individual and uh, brings, uh, brings them together to work together for the best interest of mankind and if there's any clash between the public and the individual always it is the interest of the public overrides the interest of the individual and uh, it's not fair that one uh, person uh, can uh, you know rule or dictate a million people and that's why uh, it is uh, the interest of the public overrides the interest of an individual uh, you talk to us uh, also in detail about the principles where we derive uh, uh, our rulings uh, from of course al quran and a sunnah Yes, so these are the Masadr al-Shara. At the end of the day, the Islamic finance is based on, uh, 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 on God's legislation, a law given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is difference between the capitalism or socialism or communism or the which rest is man -made. of which is a man-made law, and this difference between a man-made law and uh, a law made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the creator, and this is the creation, and this is perfect, and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the perfect one, and uh, this is not perfect. It's is not complete the way Allah Azza wa Jal is perfect and complete. And that's why uh, the, the Sharia is based on the Quran and the Sunnah, the words of Allah and the Hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then based on Ijma' which is a scholarly consensus and the Qiyas which is analogy. And the, and the practices of the Sahaba. So this is all our masadir and resources that we depend on and go back to you, you, when it you comes to applying. You stress that the door of Ijtihad uh, uh, is open and should remain open uh, in, um, uh, in the area of, of uh, the economy because every day we're seeing something new that was not there 1400 years yes. ago. Yes. Now there's a lot of things that exist in our days that did not exist at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's why the door of ijtihad is open, especially when it comes to trade, especially when it comes to Islamic uh, economy, especially when it comes to transactions. And uh, the door of ijtihad will continue to stay open and continue to be open for the best interest of mankind. As there are some rules and laws that are open to changes because of the changes of the time and places. And this is the Islamic uh, ruling, this is the Islamic qaida that says that there are some laws that change uh, with the changes of time and uh, places. And uh, amongst those laws are the uh, buying and selling and the transaction and the trades. 
And as we could see day to day, there's always new things that are coming up due to the uh, globalization and the small world village and the interaction with other uh, communities and other nations and the technology and so on. You talk to us about the difference between uh, b uh, the world of Islamic banking and the traditional uh, banking of, of nowadays and, and you've made it very clear uh, um, uh, that uh, we have to stay away from the disease of riba which Allah promised war on those who practice it and you explain to us that um, uh, interests uh, uh, who are forbidden uh, in Islam uh, exploit the borrower while uh, uh, in Islamic uh, uh, banking, uh, you are trying to help uh, the borrower. Yes, of course. Uh, it, it is our duty as uh, human beings and Muslims to always help those who are in need. And uh, Islam encourages uh, to lend money to those who are in need of that money more than what encourages to even donate. And there's a lot more rewards in lending money than uh, donating, as the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. And uh, the, the reason is that uh, when the borrower asks is because he asks was when he's in need. And uh, it is the duty of uh, the Muslims to establish the uh, financial institution to lend money in accordance to the Sharia ah that does not uh, deal with usury or take usury or even you know, provide usury or interest. And we know that usury interest riba is one of the evil actions that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu warned and Allah Azza wa Jalla declared war against and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said Allah had cursed those who take riba and give riba and those who witness the contract of riba and write uh, the contract of riba. So it is a major, major sin that unfortunately many Muslims fall into it. And uh, there are solutions and the solutions are the Islamic uh, banking and that's where the bank Islamic institutions are different to uh, Islamic financial institutions are different to uh, the non-Islamic financial institutions that the bank, the Islamic banking is based uh, on no riba. It's based on uh, uh, wadi'a, for example, which uh, is, is security that I put my money as security or as uh, a place where I could secure my money or based on investment. And there, yeah, and there could be murabaha or musharaka. Or, yes, uh, there's uh, other whatever. forms of uh, there's other forms of products or there's other forms of ways that uh, the, the bank can go in with the investors or with the uh, customers such as murabaha, such as musharaka, su such as mudaraba and uh, these different uh, Islamic uh, uh, principles that the Sharia had endorsed. Right. Uh, Sheikh, uh, you also talked to us about a lot of ethics and, and morals and values involved in, in dealings. And, 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 uh, and of course it was uh, back then in the days of the real good uh, Muslims uh, that uh, the, the ethics of, of the merchants uh, the Muslim merchants uh, across uh, the globe drew a lot of people uh, to our uh, great religion but it seems today those uh, most of, of those ethics morals and values are, are not present and, y and you can see this perhaps in a field like the stock market we talked about the stock market where there's a lot of hidden agreements where there is a lot of uh, uh, tricks uh, where sometimes the regulators are even involved uh, with the institutions and uh, or the individuals the the heavy uh, uh, um, uh, the, the rich individuals really exploit uh, the rest of the population no and nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam he in, he says in the hadith that the honest and trustworthy merchant is with the prophets and the trustworthy people and the martyrs in the after so like you know this is a, a very beautiful hadith to encourage people to be honest, to be honest merchants, because you know honesty is the key of uh, all success, and lying or deception is a key of corruption. And whenever there's lying and deception in a community, there's corruption there. And that's why in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to always uh, speak about uh, on, uh, on the morals and the ethics of someone working in the market. And in the past, uh, the scholars will always encourage someone before they initiate a business or start working in the market to at least take some lessons on the morals and the ethics of uh, someone in the market and what is uh, permissible and not permissible in the market. Right. Uh, Sheikh, uh, you also talked to us about, about the um, uh, concept of insurance uh, in Islam. You said uh, nowadays the common form is, is banned uh, by um, uh, Islamic Sharia, uh, but that there is uh, another uh, form that would be acceptable. So please remind yes, we, us we mentioned of this. Before that you mentioned uh, that the, greater, uh, the greatest insurance of all is Allah. Of yeah, course. Well, insurance and insurance companies are becoming one of the big dominating companies in the Western world. And uh, insurance is haram now due to two major reasons, al-gharar and riba. Gharar which is 
an ambiguous contract, unknown and unclear contract, and riba, which is usury, uh, that uh, usury been uh, applied on it, or there's usury or interest in it. And uh, as a Muslim, my reliance and insurance is with Allah Azza wa Jalla. I rely on Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. At the end of the day, whatever Allah had written on me to happen will happen. And whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had written on me not to happen will never happen. This is what a Muslim. But uh, there is also uh, a, a, a form of an Islamic takaful and a form of Islamic uh, social uh, cooperation or, or, or solidarity in which Muslims can get together on Islamic bank can initiate this form of product or this form of uh, uh, way and they get all Muslims to donate ten dollars or twenty dollars or whatever amount of money monthly or yearly and make the money that's being collected to be there as a support for anyone who is in need of fixing their car or health and so on and so on. So this is the best way and this is the most clearest and solid way than just paying your money to an insurance company not knowing what's going to happen to that money and if something would happen and not. Sheikh, you also talked to us about uh, uh, monopoly, how Islam totally rejects that and how uh, dangerous it would be uh, for a businessman or even the state to sometimes to be involved in yes, uh, the monopoly. monopoly is haram in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He even mentioned a few uh, ways that people used to do in the past. So that, uh, and the Prophet also mentioned uh, to forbidding that, uh, as he said, hadr in libad, in which someone who comes from outside the city to come and sell their stock, and then one person will meet them on the borders and take their stock from them and then come into the market That's and sell it higher for the reason of monopolizing. These are some of the issues and matters that the Prophet ﷺ forbid taking place because it results and leads to uh, monopolizing. Uh, Islam, mm. uh, Islam does not recommend uh, fi having fixed price or uh, the government putting fixed prices on the items of the merchants. But Islam encourages the, to monitor and monitor the market, monitor the merchants, monitor businessmen, and uh, remind them not to, uh, you know, to put their prices too high. Always monitor them to, you know, be reasonable in their prices and be reasonable in what they sell. You, all, you also gave us great examples on, on the ethics involved in auctions. Yes, and uh, you know, the auctions. Uh, we know that uh, the word auction does not carry with a, a lot of good morals with it. And when you think of an auction, you think of a loud place, people screaming, shouting, money, right. and uh, deception. And uh, unfortunately, Inside that information an auction is permissible in Islam. It's not because you are bidding. But uh, there's got to be Islamic morals in that. There's got to be honesty that, uh, you know, whatever it's been offered to auction uh, should be described with honesty. And also, there's got to be, uh, you know, there's no cheating in which there's no nudges as the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi forbid, in which the, uh, the, the auctioneer or the auction company agrees with someone just to put the prices up so someone else you know can be fooled with that and you know go up with the prices so these are the morals and the ethics that the sharia has spoken about 14 centuries ago right uh, again uh, no harm shall be inflicted la darara wa la dirar. Mm. this is a very important principle no harm should be brought onto yourself know that you bring harm to others. This is right. the qaida of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, Sheikh Shadi, dear viewers, will be back uh, for the closing segment of Huda TV series on Islamic finance in a very short while. Stay with us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Once again, Sheikh Shadi, as we are closing out uh, the TV series on Islamic finance, you also uh, emphasize on the important value of production uh, rather than consumption and moderation in consumption. Uh, mm. in our lives yes uh, the upper hand is a lot more greater than the lower hand a Muslim should always aim to be high as a Muslim we should always aim to be high I should always aim to be high in my education I should always aim to be high in my social life in my sports in my, in my work um, in my career in, in everything I should always aim to be high and this is what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu came for Nabi Ali Sallallahu always wants us to be the best of people he did not want us to be just average people, but the best of people. And being the best, you need to be productive. And that's why Nabi Ali encourages many of the hadith for someone to be productive. 
a lot more greater than someone just sitting down and doing nothing. For someone to go and work and earn their living and sweat for their living is a lot more greater than sitting down and begging people. This is the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. You know, encouraged that you know to revive a dead land and whatever. Uh, and if you revive a dead land that's uh, a property that does not belong to anyone, then that pro- property becomes yours. He sallallahu alaihi wasallam encouraged to you know implant uh, trees and plants, and anyone, any human being or animal that benefits from that or eats from it will be a sadaqa. You know, all these things that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned all shows to the importance of being a productive. A Muslim, a productive member of society, a productive Muslim that can always produce good and bring good to the community. And obviously the more you produce is the more people that benefit and the more people that benefit you can benefit and the more you benefit you could also benefit others. SubhanAllah. And, and, and before tackling social dimension in Islamic economics, enough to say, of course, that zakah is Islam's uh, third uh, pillar. Um, Sheikh, uh, you also uh, emphasize the important values we should stick with uh, and the ethics and 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 you pit honesty versus uh, uh, forgery uh, many times and 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 such the greatest characteristic of all honesty against uh, one of the worst was prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam warned from in one hadith and said uh, uh, three consecutive times yeah Nabi he mentioned about the major sins and then he said i forged testimony or a false witness and uh, and the prophet ﷺ always encouraged honesty let us take an example of the prophet ﷺ. what's amazing during the time of the prophet ﷺ in mecca while the people of mecca used to fight against the prophet ﷺ, used to speak bad about the prophet ﷺ. at night when they don't have any place to put their money or their values uh, valuables they'll come to the prophet ﷺ and put a, a him with him sallallahu alayhi wasallam you know, like people like you know, people who used to really fight the Prophet and speak against him and torture him and the companions at night, the only person they could trust is the Prophet. Alayhi salatu alayhi salatu salatu salatu. So, Sadiq al Amin. So look at this quality of the Prophet. Alayhi salatu alayhi salatu. And when the Prophet salam migrated from Mecca to Medina, the Prophet alayhi salatu alayhi salatu left behind Ali so he could give back those valuables and those uh, money to the people they left it behind with him. He did not even use an excuse to himself, look at these people, my enemies, look what these people done to me, I'll take their wealth and walk away. But this is the Salam quality of the Prophet alayhi salatu alayhi salatu. This is the quality of the mu'min. This is the quality of a believer. A believer is honest. A believer only says what's honest and trustworthy. And, uh, and the believer is trustworthy and is always, uh, always speaks uh, the truth and speaks what's right. يَمْحَقُ اللَّهُ الرِّبَى وَيُرْبِي الصَّدَقَاتِ Just another uh, reminder as we, yes. we close out here. Yes, يَمْحَقُ اللَّهُ الرِّبَى Allah destroys riba. Allah will always destroy riba. And if someone has riba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy their wealth. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there is no money made from riba. Even that you think you made money from riba, you're not making money. Whether you've got riba on your house, you've got riba in your business, you've got riba in your, in your cars, you've got riba for yourself. The unfortunate thing these days, people will take riba even to, you know, to bring food at home. The whole life is based on riba. Riba is an evil sin. Riba is haram, haram, haram. All sorts of riba, all sorts of usury. Even if it's your first house or second house or third house, it is all haram. You, you, you rather have patience and struggle in this life than having patience and facing the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of riba. Na haram, the war was declared on it the way riba uh, war was declared by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on it. Okay, Shaykh, uh, the social dimension in um, uh, Islamic mm. economics. Yes, w- when we speak about the Islamic economics or the Islamic finance, we are talking about a complete system. Not just one part, and this is the beauty of Islam. Islam is a way of life in all aspects, a complete way of life. In every angle, in every moment, in every hour, in every place of life. This is the beauty of Islam. So uh, Islam, the financial system of Islam, and the, 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 the way Islam that will find is in all aspects is just perfect. It all completes one another. It's like that chain that's connected to one another. When you have, for example, the buying and the selling, the market, then you've got the zakat. 
you know, that 2.5% out of your wealth to be given to the poor or needy or the other percentages out of the other things that you must pay the care of, the donations, looking after the yatim, the orphans, uh, you know, uh, the waqif, the encouragement of waqif and having a waqif and endowment, uh, presents and gifts to one another. All this just a perfect uh, form, you know, the responsibility of the husband and his financial responsibility upon uh, or uh, over his wife and his children, the responsibility of the children with their parents, the inheritance and how it's divided. It just, it's just that perfection. And you, s- perfect you stress a number of times it's simply perfect because uh, the one who put it and installed it is it's the, the perfect, perfect one, Allah Azza wa Jal. And if people follow that system, will never have a problem. Mm-hmm. There will be no dispute. There will be no conflicts because one of the major reasons or one of the major principles that the Sharia focuses on when it comes to transactions and trades is avoiding conflict. And you'll find conflicts between a brother and a brother. You find conflicts between a son and a father. You find conflicts between the close ones because they did not follow the Islamic principles. Not following this system is only bringing corruption and dispute amongst people. The, the importance, uh, Sheikh, uh, among the values uh, you, you, you stressed on, the importance of having uh, no greed and the importance of uh, consent or content, and the importance of truly believing that Allah is the one and only Raza. Yes, and these are the character. Uh, these are the characteristics of the believer relying on Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The Prophet ﷺ said, "If you rely on Allah, the way should be relied on." You, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will sustain you the way he sustains a bird. Early in the morning, leaves with an empty stomach, comes back with a full stomach. Where did this bird know? Where, you know, birds have shops to sell to one another. Animals have shops to sell one another. There's no, you know, you rarely hear of an animal dying from starvation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sustains. Allah sustains an animal. And Allah sustains that human being. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the sustainer. As a Muslim, I should rely on Allah. Allah is the one who will sustain me at the end of the day. If Allah had written on me something, this thing will come to me. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't written on me that thing, if this whole world gets together to give it to me, it will never happen. You know, if this whole world gets together to give it to me, it will never happen. As a Muslim, I rely on Allah. At the same time, I take by the means. I take by the asbab. I, I get out there, I work hard, I try and do my best, I try and obtain the best, I try and achieve the best. This is the Muslim. So, وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ yes, the end, yeah. victory is only... From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as, uh, as the Muslim, Muslim relies on Allah and takes by the mean. When a man came to the Prophet and he said, Oh Messenger of Allah, what do I do with my camel? Do I leave it loose and rely on Allah or tie it? So the Prophet said, tie it and rely on Allah. So we rely on Allah Azza wa Jal and... And we take by the means. Sheikh, we only have three minutes in our episode. I really enjoyed uh, being with you. I hope that uh, our dear viewers really uh, enjoyed the TV series on Islamic finance. A closing statement from you, Sheikh Shadi Asulim. I would say and I remind every Muslim that Islam is a practical way of life in all aspects of life. As long as we follow the deen of Islam and as long as we implement the religion of Islam in our life and as long as we follow the Quran and Sunnah, we'll have no problems. We will, not have, we will have no problems in our financial lives. We'll have no problems in our social lives. We'll have no pl- problems in our political lives. We'll have no problems in our educational life. We'll have no problems in any any form or any uh, area in life. As long as we follow the Quran Sunnah, because this is the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the system of Allah azza wa jal, who knows best about mankind. The moment we drift out of that is the moment you start seeing problems. And unfortunately, we do live in a time and era where there's so many problems. We have a lot of problems in our financial lives. We have a lot of problems in our social lives. We have a lot of problems in our political lives. We have a lot of problems everywhere. The reason is because we are far away from Islam. The moment we turn back to Islam, the moment we turn back to the Quran, the moment we turn back to the Sunnah, you find changes happening. You find changes happening in your life. That's why we need to turn back to Allah. That's the only solution. Islam is the only solution. No other solution except Islam. So as a Muslim, I need to implement Islam. Before we start calling upon non-Muslims to implement Islam, me as a Muslim, I need to start implementing Islam. I need to, I need to follow and implement what I believe in. I need to start putting Islam into my life as a practical religion, not just a religion of theory. Islam is a practical religion. As the Prophet Muhammad was described as a walking Quran. We need as a Muslim, every single one of us, we need to be a walking Quran. And especially those in the businesses and markets. Don't use your business and then use your shop just a mean of you obtaining rizq. 
but also use it as a mean of being a da'iyah, being a preacher that could also attract people to the religion of Islam. Many countries, many countries were open through honest, religious, sincere, respectful, trustworthy uh, Muslim merchants. Many countries, Indonesia, 200 million, the great, uh, one of the greatest or the largest Muslim population country, they entered Islam through respectful, uh, honest Yemeni uh, merchants. Uh, they were all Muslims and they dealt with them. So me as a businessman, alhamdulillah, I could also, uh, I have the opportunity of being a da'iyah. I have the opportunity of preaching Islam. I have the opportunity of advocating Islam. So not only I use that as a mean of getting an income, but also use my business and use my investment and use my shop or use my market as a mean of calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be a way that will attract people to the deen of Allah azza wa jal. So this is one of my advice. And, you know, we are to blame that some people are turn away from Islam or people turn away from Muslims because of the dealings they find from Muslims. Dishonesty, uh, lying, uh, no trust, uh, no trust, no uh, deception, uh, cheating. We need to change the image. We are at the end of the day, we're all messengers of the messenger of Allah. We're all ambassadors representing the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we all have that responsibility upon us and we need to remind ourselves of it Sheikh, always. Sheikh Shadi Sulaiman. Uh, uh, from Sydney, Australia. Jazakumullahu khayran. And may Allah make this uh, in fi uh, mizan hasanatik. Uh, it's been a great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sheikh Shadi uh, Suleiman from uh, Sydney, Australia. And with this, uh, we've uh, closed uh, Huda TV series uh, on uh, Islamic uh, finance. Uh, we hope uh, you've uh, enjoyed it and we hope that it will be of benefit to you. May Allah reward uh, Sheikh Shadi uh, Suleiman uh, and reward you. Um, uh, and until we meet again, this is Muhammad Abdurrahim thanking you for watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.